Sean Brett Hetty. Well, the hair does stand on the back of the neck at this time every year before the grand final. By the time 94 came around, I was 24 years of age, already played in two grand finals, so that made things a little bit easier to deal with the pressure. Um, but having said that, I also knew at that stage that you know, my career was, was going on, and I also probably felt that pressure that um, you really wanted to perform in big games. That was what Nick always said to us. Um, he said that people are always judged on how they perform in big games, and that I was one that just took that to heart. You know, I really wanted to, um, you know, perform when there was a big game to be performed in, and um, and um, you know, I know that he, even to this day, um, still says that to uh, to his teams. It's got it. Uh, I felt quite good. Um, you know, I'd, I'd kicked quite a few goals, you know, under the previous couple of weeks, so yeah, you know, I was feeling quite good personally. Um, you know, as a, as a group, we'd had a really good lead up. So it felt pretty good going into it. Uh, you never know how grand finals are going to pan out though, you know, and particularly in Melbourne, you know, with, you know, 50 or 60,000 people against you, um, you know, if the, the, the momentum changes early, um, it doesn't take long for the other side to, uh, to find another gear. Um, but we're lucky enough to sort of snuff that out, I guess, um, at various stages throughout the game. Off the, ground the, wrong way, picked up by Hedy. the biggest thing that I remember about the game was that we just couldn't kick straight. And I was one of the biggest culprits, you know. I had two or three set shots that, uh, that missed. Um, there was a number of guys that had set shots and missed. Um, and in football, if you, you know, expend a massive amount of energy and don't get results on the board, um, generally you get hurt and that was what was really concerning me and probably concerning the the, the, uh, the, the coaching staff because we'd just spent so much energy um, and had no reward for it. Everybody was spraying him from every angle and um, and he stepped up and drilled one from uh, from 50 metres out. 45 metres out then, Kemp, will this be a goal? Yes it will. From that point onwards, you know, I think I then got one and then somebody else got one and, and it really just Change the mindset because we'd you know we'd gone suddenly from you know kicking a lot of points um, or out of bounds um, to you know start to get some space between us. So um, the point that I really noticed that um, you know that we probably um, were going to win the game was late in that quarter. You get the feeling this far from home, it's all over. Oh, it's just massive, you know. It's just. You know, it's a bonding um, experience that no one can ever take away. The Eagles are premiers for the second time in three seasons. You only have to see the guys together to know just how close they are and, you know, what sort of experiences they've had together. You know, it wasn't just the good times, you know, we went through some, you know, pretty rough times to start with as well. They're celebrating at the MCG. Mick was a bit of a yeller and a screamer. Um, which I don't know if you've picked up on, but he could be brutal um, in terms of his assessment on people, um, and yeah, you know, and and therefore yeah, you know, that bonds you as well. Um, yeah, so I mean, when I catch up with the guys, it's just one of the best you know days of my year, um, and we try and do it as regularly as we can. Um, and yeah, I mean, the old adage goes: uh, by the time we get together and you have a few beers. Uh, what did they used to say that you're um, you're a champion within three weeks of retiring, and within six months of retiring you're irreplaceable. And um, after a couple of beers, that's what comes out of everyone's mouth, I think. 